Okay, I'm ready. Great. I was gonna. I was gonna try to watch. I was trying to fit in some time so to rewatch chilly scenes again. Or oh, parts yeah. of it. Parts of it. I was well. I got there. Uh, really, I just came for the Q and A uh, when I saw oh, wow. when I met oh, you. Okay. I had been there because I was uh, I was running from something and I I, I but I wanted to because I, I was actually wanting to meet Joe. Are we? Are we oh, we are. I'm sorry. Okay, I, that's my kind of okay, thing. Sure. I just hit the ground running. Uh, I actually was there to meet Joan. I wanted to meet Joan Micklin Silver. Right. She couldn't make it. Right. right. She was, and it's, it's it's a number of times where I've, and, well, I shouldn't say a number twice on two occasions right. where I wanted to go to a Q and A or a screening and meet right. her because I wanted right. to like uh, what's the term uh, like ambush her essentially yeah. and ask her to do my podcast kind of maniac i am but uh and both times she canceled on her appearance so i hope she's okay i hope you know, she's all I, right. I guess it's not that easy to get around right yeah anymore because usually she i mean i saw her at a i can't remember if it was an anniversary screening down at uh film forum uh-huh right um, and that, that that was the one or it was a quad was it the film forum or the quad no the film forum it was okay yeah, yeah. here we Thanks, go Ron. let's see if this works can you hear? That's good. Can you hear? Yeah, that's oh, good. I can turn up the volume a little bit. In the no, headphones. that's good. Okay. As long as I can hear my voice. Okay. Yeah, that actually works pretty well. Yeah. This is a good head. This is a good uh, recorder, by the way. Another thing you should know about. Yeah, like if you absolutely. need to know. I mean, it depends. Like a lot. Obviously, if you're over, I don't know. How did things run at the Nutmeg Post where you did Gilbert Gottfried's podcast? Uh, do they have a more a permanent studio. setup? Yeah, it's so a, it's a studio. But this is just as fine if yeah. the sound works. No, it, it sounds studio quality. Yeah. You this know, particular just, machine. Yeah, it's like okay. there's no sound, there's no white noise, no. Right, right. Whereas an earlier version I used to use of this. Well, the good thing is you can travel. You know, you can you can right. move to the person or right like what you did for me. So that's yeah. great. Yeah, exactly. I have more flexibility, and yeah. I think you know because I'm not Gilbert Godfrey, I don't really have that. You know. <laughs> well, well I don't know if he always had it, but but. Uh, um, they well, they the space was kind of nice, but yeah. I think they've moved again. Oh yeah, I think so. You're right. I think you're right. Yeah. I think they mentioned something about that. Yeah. That that space was. Uh, yeah. Is that me? Yeah. Oh, well, thank you, thank you so much. This is great. Thank you for just you know kind of having faith and doing something like this. It's always fun to talk about movies with people who yeah. like movies. So that's good. Plus, yeah. I'm cur- you know I'm curious just about the phenomena of a podcast. Right. It in- intrigues me. I haven't heard a lot of them. I've heard some. Uh-huh. But but what I'm finding interesting, it's kind of it's like it's like having uh whatever your fancy is, whoever you want to talk to. Right. You know, that's the idea for this screenplay that I'm doing. This character basically likes talking to people. And um what and I, he's an actor, so He's in a one of those. He's like me. He's in. A, he's older, so the work uh-huh. is less and the competition is greater. So he, but he's curious, and as an actor, you're always sure. studying anyway. Whether it's a, you know, background or something related to the to the work. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't mean backstory or any stuff like that. It's just the natural, at least for me. It it fills a natural curiosity. Right. Um, structurally, I'm less interested in a person's history. I'm I'm pretty much, you know, whatever is written, that's what I'm. I've trained myself to do. Some actors have a totally different point of view. They've got to know how they brush their teeth. To me, it's much more. Um, it, it's just trusting the writing more. I understand. Right, technique. We're talking. Kind well, of, it's you're just kind a, of talking a different about approach. Technique. Yeah, it is technique, but it's everybody's different. I mean, there's every acting school has a different point of view. Yeah. Well, I was reminded of because uh, I, I was first of all I was I was listening to your show, doing Gilbert's show, and then I also watched your the film you directed. I'm jumping ahead, but I guess I'm not jumping ahead. We can go whatever back order. and forth. Yeah. The uh, you directed a feature film called uh, King of the Corner, right. which I was surprised that I hadn't seen it already. Well, it not- didn't really get a re- I mean, I I gave it a release. Uh, I I it was an independent film, as you know. It was yeah. I think it cost four hundred thousand dollars. We shot it in twenty days. And it was based on two short stories oh. written by um, a wonderful writer named uh, Jerry Shapiro, 
who I met in... An Italian guy that you... Uh, uh, yeah. I met him in 2000. Was it 2000? I think so, yeah. I was. Uh, I had taken a short film that I had directed yep. by Courier, which is an O. Henry short story that I adapted. Anyway, while I was in uh, Telluride, a fellow named Danny Laley, who runs the independent movie theater that's part of the University of Nebraska in Lincoln, introduced himself and said, would you come to Lincoln with your short? Because mm-hmm. he really liked that. I said, oh, my God, absolutely. And... Um, <clears throat> So I went to Lincoln, and while I was there, they were very sweet. They showed Local Hero. They showed the short. They gave me, you know, they treated me like I was uh, Marlon Brando. It was hysterical. <laughs> but uh, very nice people. And yeah. then when I, they put me up in some probably f- guest faculty or maybe the president's You're right. residence. It was mm-hmm. really nice. Yeah. And... Um, uh, there was an envelope with a letter and the and and the book, and the letter was from Jerry Shapiro, who said, "I'm sorry, I can't be there to meet you. I'm oh, a he big on the fan. Faculty? This guy was he, in the... he is on the faculty, I see. and he wrote and said, "I'm in New York City with my wife Judy, and we're seeing a, a Tom Stoppard play because mm-hmm. they love the theater. And then he was coming back, and I was going to miss him, so he wrote me this beautiful letter, and he said, "I begin." I begin, he said, I teach an American Jewish literature course here at the university. And as you can imagine, most of the students are Lutherans, but it's a very popular <laughs> Interesting. class. Well, it's, you know, Malamid, you're in the middle of nowhere. It's not a very big Jewish like Malamid, population. Like uh, Yeah, everybody. All those guys. Everybody. That, like. So he, begin, he, he used to begin the semester with, I think I did a reading of a Shalom Aleichem short story. Mm-hmm. It could have been another another. Yiddish writer, I can't remember. Anyway, he began the class that way, and he ended it showing Crossing the Land Sea. And Mm -hmm. the way, the letter was just a beautiful introduction, and he said, I'm leaving you a copy of my book, Mm -hmm. which I I think we might share a similar sense of humor. And the book was called Bad Jews and Other Stories, and I just fell on the floor laughing. I wrote it, read it on the <clears throat> way back to Los Angeles where I was doing a TV show. And uh, I, I called him the next day and said, I'd, I'd like to option your book. Would you be interested in working on a screenplay with me? And he said he never had. Mm-hmm. But I said, well, we'll do it together. And long story short, we did the movie. Mm-hmm. I think it took two more years to get it done. And then I cold called theaters and booked it for three months wow. and then an, an independent company picked it up I'm forgetting their name right now Mark Cuban runs their company mm-hmm. you'd, you'd know it in a second and they picked it up for the last four months Okay. so I went around the country went to 27 cities and I did Q&A's on every Friday wow. and every Saturday for like so six I, months for, for 27 weeks yeah worth. that's amazing seven, it half turned out to seven yeah. or eight months wow I wonder if you could even do that like that now. It's oh, sure. Been, yeah. Well, I mean, you, a variation on that. Landmark like, landmark theaters. Oh, right. They of were course. the ones. Right, yeah. right. Of course. I, yeah. I always forget. He owns those. Yeah. And there's one over here. They just opened up on the west side not too long ago on West 57th Street, right. actually. Right, yeah. But, uh, you know, it's... it's uh, it's not so easy to. Uh, you can't get the reviews like you did twelve years ago. Well, you I made actually this movie came out in hired. It came out in two thousand. You hired a publicist. Yeah, I hired a publicist, mm-hmm. and she uh, would set me up in each town, mm-hmm. and I would get in on a Wednesday. No, I yeah, I would get in on a Wednesday. I would do publicity Thursday and Friday, um, and then. The first screening, whenever that was, on a Friday. And then, you know, it was four Q&As. Hey, uh, it was four Q&As on Friday and five on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And I would do press. I would do um, television and radio. And some were better than others. Sorry, I'm up here. That's all right. I'm in the middle of a very important. Do you have batteries? I just, I'm now nervous I'm running out. And I'm gonna like be really unprofessional. I'll, I'll I'll leave them with you, so I barely need them. That looks like good pizza, huh? I have that's to like, take a bite. See if it looks like it's that's whole wheat I, or something. That's why I did your pod- podcast. <laughs> I have so many uh, filmmakers on though who have done this, 
So, you know, I mean, done, it's done uh, DIY, DIY. And well, well, everybody does that, right? Yeah. Or, well, not everybody. Everybody. Some people can't afford to get the publicist. They've run out of money and they, you know, they can barely get their film out into a few, a handful of theaters. They've spent all the money they have. Well, I called. Um, or money they don't have. Right. In some cases. The first person I called, because I knew it wouldn't be that easy to, to get bookings, but yeah. I thought. Yeah. You know, with the cast that I have, I mean, it was Isabella Rossellini and Eli Wallach, Eric Bogosian, Dominic Chinesi, Beverly D'Angelo, Rita Moreno. I uh, had the anybody names. known? Uh, no. And then you also known. had. I should mention one other person in it because he actually, you, actually, two people in it. And it's funny you to mention them because they're the two that have done my podcast. You didn't mention, you didn't mention two actors that are in there. Uh-huh. One, one, the youngest uh, member of your cast, and one is probably the oldest, Ooh. if not Dominic. Do you have any more than that? This takes four. I'll leave them with you. I had a bear. No, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm just like, I, I this thing you. takes four. No, I had on Harris Eulin, who right. I, you know. I love Harris. Love. And I, you know, he's, he's a theater guy, too, right. of course. And he. Did he, he do your podcast? Yeah, yeah. But it was not one on one. It was, uh, it was, he was, did an independent film, like, like, you know, I guess is the thing that uh, people like, as you say, because they, they're not getting as much Hollywood work. Right. Anyway. Well, I, I was always, working. I, I just. I yeah I wasn't do oh you mean I'm just talking about him he's significantly older yeah but he works oh my he, God, he just you. finished the show I just saw him on he, he uh he finished what Paris did a show a TV show yeah oh okay I think it was called now that there's so much TV you're right I mean probably now everybody's getting work they may not be making well, what they once it's were it's not as much as you think you. Uh-huh. I mean there's only so all you got to do is turn on a television and go to a movie there's not there aren't any people of any age in their 60s 70s 80s you know they just there's one. Okay. But there's, no, I mean, a lot of series, though, you know, there's, there's, there's the kind of like uh, recurring grandparent characters. You're right, though. They're not getting, yeah, but they're, they're not. all, you know, th- that's network. Okay. And those are terrible. Yeah, that's tr- kind of true. I mean, true. basically, they're, you know, erectile dysfunction jokes and yeah. shit jokes. I know. And, it's know, really terrible. insulting, right? Totally. Uh, it's, 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 been it's, going, the, it's, it's like it makes a cliche seem straightforward. Yeah, the concept of what an older person is is it, it almost doesn't seem to exist. Yeah, I mean, I'm 71. I don't walk around going, "Oh my god, <laughs> I can't. I don't know how to function." Yeah, I mean, that day may come, but not everybody. It's just so lacking in imagination. You know, there's another uh, version of that also, uh, even on a broader scale, which is men. Men, just men, are, are in sitcoms, especially network sitcoms. Sitcoms, they're the stupidest been, they're people d- on the planet. They're always idiots, and they're emasculated. I, was, I made a comment about it because I was in the subway. I was walking down the, the lobby, uh, the corridor at the subway, and, you know, they have the posters. And one was with this, uh, the guy, it was ca- canceled, and then another network, Tim Allen. Oh, but Tim, he had a Tim? yeah. Tim well, he had a huge show in the, yeah, yeah. in the world, but he has his new one now. The image of the two, I forget, a famous actor plays his wife, beautiful lady. She's been around a while, and Did it's it, terrible. I'm, I'm just blanking. Same wife from the original yeah. show? N- well, from the one they canceled just recently. Oh, it's I, a I, new. I sh- it's a new show, and they canceled it, and they moved it to another network. It, it's not the old classic show. That was a different. One. Anyway, so it, it, but the, they showed them. They're wearing fishing gear. They're like out on a fishing mm-hmm. weekend, and they're standing there. And the wife's got a big catch; she's got a big p- fish, and he's standing next to her with a tiny fish with a minnow. Yeah, and I'm just like, uh, I stopped, I walked back to it, I took a picture of it because I said, "Why is it that they're always emasculating men on sitcoms?" It's like you know, <laughs> they've been. It's as old as television. It is right. That's All the why husbands have always knows been best Was you know, father knows least. Well, when there wasn't a woman, which was not infrequently too, the only solution was to kill off the mother, right? That was a, uh, they uh, or kill off the father. That was a really really common thing, at least in my day and age when I was coming. Right. Up. No, none of the it, when I was a young guy coming up and watching TV, it seemed like everybody was either a widow or a widower. Hmm, that's possible. You know, so it had changed a bit, but uh, anyway, chewing. that's okay. Peter Rieger's eating New York pizza. He's he drove three hours. Just the least pizza. he can have is a slice of pizza. Yeah, I thought he was leaving me a slice. Now I'm getting hungry. No, yeah. no, no. It's okay. He's got. I, I think there may be one more in there. Yeah. Anyway, um, um, but we're getting anyway. So getting off track. so um, I I uh, had all these wonderful actors, and we tried to get distribution. 
I, and I would we'd send it to people, and generally the response from those who who did independent films or distributed independent films was, well, we really like the movie, but we don't know how to distribute it. And I thought, this is insane. You, of course you know how to distribute it. What are you talking about? Yeah. But that's what I was getting. And finally, I got so fed up. Somebody, uh, I can't even remember who it is, but he said how much he liked it. But mm-hmm. he said, I, I just, you know, we just don't know how to market it. And I said, you got to help me out here. This makes no sense at all to me. I don't know any profession in the world where a challenge is not taken, right. whether you're a plumber or a surgeon or a dirt bike rider or mm-hmm. a racer or anything, or an athlete. Can you imagine an athlete saying, I don't want to play the Yankees because you know we don't know how to beat. It's, it's, it makes no sense. Mm-hmm. And so I said to this guy, who was very charming. I wish I could remember his name. He said, no, no, we, I really liked it. My wife really liked it. I said, so educate me. What am I missing here? Teach me something. I just don't understand why everybody says they like it. Mm-hmm. You know, to me, I think they're basically being, they didn't like it. They're just being polite. And he said, no, 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 we, I, I really did like it. And I said, well, what's the problem? And his answer was very insightful for me. He said, we're lazy. I said, who's lazy? He said, distributors, we're lazy. We want a sure thing. And I said, well, nobody knows what a sure thing is. He said, well, your film cost $400,000. We think, from our point of view, it would take the same amount of money it would take to get your film out and released. We feel we would only make a half a million dollars. So we'd rather spend the same money, energy, and time on a $20 million movie, and we'll make $20 million. And Mm -hmm. I said, forgive my arrogance here, but... uh, Nobody knows which film is going to make $20 million. Isn't that William Goldman's famous Mm -hmm. admonition? Mm -hmm. Nobody knows anything. And he said, you're right. You're right. But I work for a company. And then I thought to myself, okay, why don't I do it? I I promised all the, didn't promise, but I offered all these actors a film. Sure. They all took minimum. And, you know, they, they, they didn't do me any favors. I don't, I don't do favors and I don't take favors. And I said, you know, if you, here's the part, this is when we're shooting, I'll adjust it to your schedule. And if I'd love to have you do it. And they all did it. Mm -hmm. I didn't call, there's not a one of them. I call up for a favor and said, I'm doing my first feature. Would you, you know, could you do this? And, but I did feel responsible to try and get it in the theaters because Mm -hmm. these are all actors that have started movies for 40 years. Eli for God knows how long. So I called up this guy, Danny Laidley, who runs this theater in Lincoln, Nebraska. I said, how'd you like to have the world premiere of the film? And he said, I'll give you two weeks. Once I had two weeks, then I could start calling other theaters and tell them I'm opening. Even on- if it's in some, you know, in, in, in Nebraska. Oh, God. It didn't matter. It didn't, Lincoln, Nebraska. It doesn't matter. Okay. A world premiere in New York or a world premiere in, in Los Angeles you could world premiere anywhere. Sure. I, I, well, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to have a to be able to say the world premiere is on March fourth, right? And and the theater, the movie's going to be there. Blah blah blah. Did you do it? Did you enter it into festivals first? Yes. Okay. Uh, the first. So you got some maybe. I got into enough festivals to see that it played. Did you get press from the any of the festivals not that it really, played in? Not really. Not really. They don't cover most festivals. They cover a handful of them. You know. No, the, it depends. It really depends. The, I think I went to maybe six, seven, or eight film festivals, mm-hmm. and um, the festivals were thrilled to have us there. It was sure. really great. Yeah, it makes sense. A well, of, you they, get to hear, you get to hear an audience. Sure. Which is invaluable. Of course, and you. Yeah, and your film had just the kind of sweet spot of of star size, right? That they would go to festivals. That they would, if they can make, if it works with their schedule. They're assuming they're not, you know, I they're had, not going to skip it because it's just right. like, you're, you know, they have some other multi million dollar option going on. Like, well, for a, for a film if, festival to be able to advertise that cast, right? It's a great cast, and and, and you know that's that's how they attract people. Of course, of course, yeah. and I would go. Sure. Uh, to represent the film, I you know. Do you remember I, if he played at Saratoga? I he just did. Met, yes. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. uh, as you mentioned it because 
uh, with Eli, and mm-hmm. I could see, and Rita, you mm-hmm. have a nice senior cast, and Harris Eulin. I could imagine that that, that yeah, would be no, a draw did, for that festival. Did we do Saratoga? They have a very large senior, uh, but they're very, yeah, very involved. No, I'm wrong. Engaged. It wasn't oh, okay. Saratoga. It wasn't was Saratoga. there one in Florida? No, I guess. No, there you must was have one in, in uh, <laughs> where was the Olympics uh, in New York? Um, <clears throat> in, oh, God. Oh, up in New York State. The Olympics from 1980 when the Americans won the oh, hockey for fuck's game. Sake. No, I'm gonna yeah, I can't remember. Anyway, we were there, and we did uh, Rochester and Buffalo and okay. Chicago, San Francisco, Los Angeles. We were all over the country. Yeah, I would imagine it would have played really well also in in, in film festivals that happen to be in areas that have retirement communities, like like the. the it could just, have, but there there was no um, and Jewish communities. Yes, of course. We played. Did you play some Jewish film festivals? A couple of Jewish film festivals. Even though I can imagine with the character being who he was, it might have been. And, you know, there's some... Oh, uh, it, it, the range care. of response yeah. is, is hysterical anyway. But um, he's, he's, I would say... I would say the most fascinating thing was... And, and the other thing that, that was fun about doing it was mm-hmm. I gave myself a lesson in distribution. Sure. And yeah, also I, that ideas yeah. travel... Because this came out in 2000, so that's almost, that's 18 years ago, before Facebook, before right. Google, or you know, all the things that a young person or anybody who could hire young people to uh-huh. do, in terms of getting the word out, mm. because waiting to do publicity on the week the week that you show up, <laughs> it's it it's not as powerful. I mean, it's it's good enough, but it's not as powerful if you could do advanced. Sure. Prep, right? Of course. You know. Yeah, get people's heads up. Right? Yeah, we did five weeks in Chicago. We got a like a three and a half star rating from uh, um, Ebert. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was. It was a great review. And the reviews were generally fantastic. You're supportive, if anything, right? If More not, than if supportive. Not, they weren't. At the they worst. weren't. Uh, they weren't. Uh, they weren't pitying me. It right. wasn't like <laughs> right. you know, poor schmo. <laughs> no, is it's a good around. film. It's it's it's. I I look at it as a kind of like an amazing accomplishment, actually, for a first time director. Thank to you. To be honest with yeah, you, I mean, you. I really was. I was. I said, man, there's some weird choices in this, and then I, you know, you, you realize that oh, that's, that's called taking some risks here, you know, which is you yeah. Know, no, I I, I I made the film the way I wanted to make it yeah. in the time I had and the money I had. Right. You know, that's a doing 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 six pages a day is mm-hmm. that's a lot. Yeah, and acting in it. I mean, after the first day, I thought, "Oh my God, what have I done?" And you only had, I'm sure, some people around for you know a day or two, maybe. Like, uh, did you have Eli around? Long? Eli was around for four days. Isabella was around five or six days. Oh, well, that's significant. Yeah, yeah. I in, mean, in, I in was able to get Harris done in a day, I think. Right, maybe two days. Frank Wood, maybe a day or two days. Frank, another was, great uh, actor. He was, which one was he? He was the sidekick to Harris. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. The, he's uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> making a gesture. I think we all know that he's. It's okay to say he was bald. Uh, listen, take a slight slight break. Finish your pizza because okay. I can also. I want to swap out the battery okay. just so I don't run into a Very problem. Good. Go ahead. It's intermission time, folks, so hurry, hurry, hurry. Step right over to our refreshment center for the most extravagant array of refreshment goodies ever assembled under one roof. Enjoy breathtaking, mouth-watering goodies, everything from a snack to a delicious full meal. At our refreshment center, you'll find a large variety of goodies to satisfy your hunger, your thirst, or your sweet tooth. So hurry, hurry, hurry. Visit our refreshment center now. For, the, for those listening, you can see... Yeah, we're back on. For those listening, <clears throat> you can actually see you're at the film we were, we're talking about, which is, again, called uh, King of the Corner, on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I you saw can get it on, it on Netflix. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you can see it on Netflix? Yeah. Even better. Let's, let's tell people to see it on Netflix. Either way, yeah. Because so, uh, on YouTube, I saw a nice... But it, they do interrupt it with uh, oh, little yeah. commercials. I, I'd say Netflix, definitely. Yeah. Check out Netflix. I'll put all the the links up if anything. I wanted to call it the original title, which was Bad Jews and Other Stories. But the producer thought it was too provocative and 
and I, you know, I think she was dead Why wrong. Why be your own? Yeah. You'd, well, gotten, you'd gotten attention. The whole and point of the story is about what is a good or bad anything, religious-wise. And there's a whole monologue where he says, I'm a bad Jew. Mm-hmm. And he talks about why. And he's in a rough situation, not because he's a bad Jew, but it raises really interesting questions about how connected we are right. to our community, the sense of wholeness in our, our life. And it, 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 I, look, King of the Corner comes about from a story, as you know, the character tells about mm-hmm. a game he played with his, his father. At his father's eulogy. Right. And um, anyway, people make mistakes. And I was too inexperienced to not fight Stick harder. With it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not inexperienced. I was too. You know, sometimes you lose a battle to win something. So I understand. Yeah, it was a choice, you made, a decision yeah. you made. The other person who I just want to mention, which I, I think he uh, was probably a very new actor at the time, was Jake Hoffman. Who? Yeah, he's he was just beginning, and he's um I, he's Dustin's son, and I, I was looking yeah. for in the screenplay the character is described as a young Dustin Hoffman. Oh, it is in my screenplay. Yeah, oh, the okay. reason I did that then, was because that's how I was categorized starting out as an actor. Oh, you're a young oh, Dustin Hoffman. right, 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 right. So I just did as... as That's a, code. As a, yes, exactly. <laughs> it's a lot but of whatever code Whatever it is, I don't know. <laughs> but I did it as a giggle mm-hmm. for myself. But yeah, it's a you, visual. You, you got the young Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> and, uh, yes, I did, yeah. actually. I got his... Um, he did the podcast because he had directed a, his first feature and I invited him on because I was kind of curious to pick... And Who, to tell him uh, how uh, when I was a Jake? kid I met his dad. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It, what was his first feature? Now you're putting me on the spot. That's right. I, but it, I'll... I'll you know, again, it, not, it was it, you could relate to it because it was, I think, a, an ambitious thing, and I think he look. Any a friend of mine used to say, who was a director a, and a producer and a, an artist, a painter named Harry Hurwitz, and he used to say, uh, every time a film is finished, a director should get a standing ovation. Whether well, everybody should, mm-hmm. because it's that hard to to get to get it done, to finish the script, to find the money, to get the you know get the release. It's just so difficult. It's amazing anything gets done, let alone anything good. I, I know, and I've had on hundreds of directors on this podcast. Yeah, I just met Peter Bogdanovich. Uh, he did. I think I don't know if I mentioned it to you that I was getting him on the show. No, right, right after we spoke, maybe. No. And um, you know, um, I bring it up just to impress you. No, 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 it's why. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm impressed because. Uh, um, well, he started out doing this very thing. Yeah. And he has a book that he wrote or edited or put together because it's interviews, uh, uh, transcriptions mm-hmm. of, interview, of, of interviews from decades that he had over the years with all these right. great directors right. over the years. And I, I said to him, the, I'm, I have I'm, the I'm, book. Yeah. And, he, and uh, it, it's called the Who the Devil Made It. Right. right. And, then, and I was like, who, um, I'm, what I'm doing is a much paler version <laughs> but it's the same. But it's, it's the, the same, same idea. Instinct, yeah. yeah, it's the same instinct. It's trying to get to something at something in a particular, just a particular type of storyteller. Well, or, I don't, I don't know if you know. Peter was always planning on being a director, but he was. I think he ran. The, oh, you two acted together. Okay. Well, same we were series. in the same. Did you have series. any scenes with him? No, no. no. Actually, I, I auditioned for that part that oh, he you played. Did? The, he's the the the, uh, the therapist. Yes, yeah. he's the therapist. Therapist, mm-hmm. exactly. But I think that um, you know what what better way? You know, I'm, I I don't know. I'd have to ask Peter if he if he always wanted to be a director. Um, but there's one great way to learn how to be a director, and that's watch watch them work. Yeah, or talk to them, and you know, yeah. find out. Was it a since we started with that? Was it always a an ambition, or did you just sort of? You know, it's come a natural thing if you're in the theater. Okay. To think about writing and directing, it's just you know a lot of people. I I think I was always interested in it. I just postponed it because my acting career was was going so well, and I always kept thinking, "I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I'll right. get to it." Before you turn around, you know, twenty five years have gone by. It's also. You're creating an opportunity for yourself, right? Uh, because if, if, yeah. if you're finding that you're not getting the parts that you like or that you 
there, there aren't as many parts written around for a 50 well, something yeah. year old guy or 60 year old guy. Look at Orson Welles, Woody Allen, Charlie right. Chaplin, Buster Keaton. I mean, it goes on and mm-hmm. on. And now it's more, you know, women who are doing it. And, right. Uh, that's probably the smart way to go. Right. Because you're at the mercy of somebody else thinking of you mm-hmm. as an actor. And unless you're an enormous star, um, and there's only 10 or 15 of those at any one time. Um, yeah, you, you're probably better off developing your own material. It's not mm-hmm. that easy to do, but mm-hmm. but uh, there, there's plenty of examples of it. How do you feel like you, you in the star, <laughs> in, that, in that constellation of actors, I mean, do you feel like, uh, did it... Sh- Surprise! How did you feel? Like in the um, in what early way? '80s? Well, you you all of a sudden were this enormous um, leading. All of a sudden, you were a star, and then you were also a leading man because you became a star. I guess Animal House was this one Animal of the biggest House films. The fir- yeah, that was '78. Anybody who came out of the film had an opportunity at that point, right? Just about. Well, once you're yes, once you have that much attention, and your name and your face get joined together, that's mm-hmm. the goal. Mm-hmm. Uh, because then people can visualize who you are. Right. And, of course, over time, they always confuse you with somebody else, unless you keep every, maybe it's year what and they call half branding and, now. Well, it's, <clears throat> yes, I, I mean, it's a it's terrible a word, but that's know, exactly what it yeah, is. Right. But you need something in, in to succeed in the public eye every year and a half to three years. Uh-huh. Three years at least, because it's it's not that the public has no memory. It's it's they they've moved on to the next person, right? You know, and and uh, you know, a, a movie star is probably making at least two movies a year, one at least. Sure, but if you think you know, when I did Local Hero, Burt Lancaster was sixty nine, and he'd already made eighty nine, eighty five films. And he was, you know, and that, he, that's he was what, probably that's not the, working as much as other contemporaries in that regard. Uh, possibly, because they possible. would they could potentially make. Well, in hundreds, the beginning, in know. the in the you know even in the silent era, twenties, thirties, forties, up into the fifties, a, a, a starring actor, leading actor was doing three films, four films, five films, at a least, year. At yeah. least, yeah, yeah. You know, they didn't take three months to shoot. Right. I believe, what's the famous film? Um, it happened one night that won all the Academy Gable Awards and, with and, uh, Frank Capra. I think they shot it in four weeks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, if you look at it, it's basically a, a, th- on a, a theater train, set. And, yeah, right. You know, there's a yeah. scene on the bus. There's a scene in the in the, in the cabin. There's this blah blah. But um, you were at, you could do four or five films a year, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you wanted to. I mean, sure, it was fun. Right, and there wasn't. Some sort of other expectation, like that less is more, more creates more of a some sort of mystique or something. It was just like you. Well, the stars back then. You were making you know, money were, for the the studio, and so you. Do what yeah, they but they you. were always fighting with the bosses mm-hmm. because the, most of the material is not very Direct. good. Yeah, they're not all one. It happened one night. No, hardly. and not all your directors were George Cooker or. That was Frank Capra. Z- or yeah. Frank's Capra or, yeah. or, you know, Ernst Lubitsch. But there Lubitsch. are, there, there, there's, a, Michael Caine told, I worked on a movie with Michael Caine called The Shock to the System, which was great fun. And he used to say to me, um, I know my reputation that I work too much, but he always felt it takes five films to get one good one. And he liked working. He said, I'm a Cockney from London, and I, uh-huh. I never think that I'm working again. That's his rationale, whatever. Yeah, it works for it him. Makes it works sense. for him. It's no, it truth. does, but not everybody succumbs to that. Uh, that, that Trust format. me. A, but he a had working... a reputation there for a while there of, of sort of... Doing uh, too much. Yeah, not being, or not being discriminating enough. But that's okay. It's, Again. It's, it's his call. That's right. You know, it that's doesn't right. I'm matter. Not, I'm, not, I'm not criticizing. Yeah. Uh, what were you going to say? I can't remember. You said, trust me. Okay. I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted you. Okay, Marikathon, mm. <laughs> which uh, I, I don't know if anybody out there, many people have seen at this stage, but it is a very, very, very singularly <laughs> memorable film now. It's, it's got, I didn't it, know about it. was it. a good idea. Uh, I don't think it was particularly well executed. It had so many interesting cameos in it. Right, it did. Uh, and but, the voice of George Carlin. Yeah, yeah, it was loaded with people. I would say I made a mistake 
in terms of how I played the character. I think he was too passive. He mm-hmm. should have been much more hostile. Um, I see. And, and, uh, but you, that's how you learn. You yeah, just sure. Learn. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. funny. I, I didn't. I didn't know about it, I, and, and I know a lot of obscure films. Right. But uh, I didn't know about that one, and so when I saw, it, I was like, "Wow, how did I not, not hear about this film before?" Because it came and went. <laughs> came and went. And made but did no you make impression. That, did you make that? Even it came out right on top of uh, Animal House, more or less. Did you make it after Animal House? I th- oh yeah sure. Okay. I think Animal House came out in July of seventy eight. This. I might have done this three came months out later. Mm-hmm. This movie came right. out in seventy. Did they shoot Americathon. It? Did they shoot it in the states or was it done? Oh in Canada? yeah, California. Okay. okay. Oh yeah. Right. Oh, I guess it. Yeah, it takes place in Cal- like the White House is in California or something. Yeah. You know, it came off real well in that. Yourself, well, <laughs> Harvey you Corman. I thought Harvey's he was hysterical. so funny in that. Oh, he's, he's so he funny. really sells it. Yeah. Um, he, he's supposed to That's the role he's in yeah. But he also goes above He's so committed And he is funny Oh yeah What was he like? He was He was uh, You know Harvey Gorman He was I, I mean uh, He was great fun to be with Very simpatico oh, okay. What a Very warm Generous guy La- We had a lot of laughs He was a lot he, of fun He was Because you know yeah. iconic, Well I loved him on, on Carol On everything Yeah but um, yeah, obviously Carol Burnett. But but um, you know, it's not every day you get a chance to work with people like that. And he was God, he was funny. Yeah, yeah. Well, I really, <clears throat> I, la- I got some good laughs at that. Um, and- the premise was fun. <clears throat> the, yeah. the America was in debt, and who were they in debt to? They were in debt to an American Indian, mm-hmm. played by Chief Dan George, who was the American Indian in Little Big Man. He was the chief, and uh, he calls in his marker, and this was around the time when uh, uh, gas was was really expensive right. relative. The final days and, of uh, Carter. Yep, the, the Carter getting, administration. You know, getting a loan. Loans were like 17, 18, 19 percent. It was an insane time, and um, there was no more gas, and everybody lived in their car, and they wore... Right. Uh, um, Gym clothes, mm-hmm. track clothes, mm-hmm. <clears throat> no suits or anything like that. It was, and it <laughs> well, was, people were tr- wearing that actually at that time. That's what it was based bit. on. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny. Yeah. Right, well, it, it was it, a it sketch by the Fireside Theater. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. they're brilliant. Yeah. Um, it's, it, you're right. It, this conceit is right on. And it also, by the way, I should say thematically stands up. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, if you watch it now, you can certainly see themes that are very pertinent right now. Um, oh, I yeah. mean, you know, in terms of the government, <laughs> the, the having some um, face in office, somebody who's a bit vapid, I know. Uh, played by John Ritter. John Ritter was the president. He right. was fantastic. Yeah. Well, he played a kind of a variation of the persona he already created on his, his own sitcom. Well, they were all, all the characters. Oh, my God. Was that politically incorrect, that film, though? Holy hey, crap. Oh, know, my God. Uh, it was 1979. Almost every film I made was <laughs> it was local. incorrect. I mean, no, well, not local hero. Animal but House. Animal right, House. Right. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. And reviewing that. We offended that. everybody we could. Yeah. Successfully, apparently. I think so. Yeah. It's, it, it's, um, it was fun to revisit some of these things after some time, you know, a lot of fun actually. And I hadn't seen local. I haven't seen well. I hadn't seen local hero. I have to say though that I I may have mentioned this to you on the phone, and that is that I did. It's like one of those movies. I just sat with Richard E. Grant, the British actor. Or at least oh yeah, South African yeah. by birth, I guess. But yeah. he he because he was in a movie in '87 called With Nail and I. I'm sure. You oh know yeah, it. sure. It was classic. And yeah. It's like one of those movies like uh, Local Hero was in the '80s, mm-hmm. where as a kid, me becoming a young adult, mm-hmm. 20 years old, whatever. In, when, when uh, I guess a local hero came out in eighty three, I think eighty three, right? That's right. February, when I hit, about, I was about nineteen or so. Yeah, and uh, you know, I was discovering these things from aside, apart from my parents, right? Who you know introduced me to a lot of films, and but now I was out there kind of figuring, and I went to see that at least twice in the movie theaters. Were you interested in directing or writing or anything like that? Or I don't. Well, I was in the theater group right uh, at high school i oh, was and oh. then i was and then you know I was, and we were real there was a real concentration in my and and i was we were in it so much so that we were actually reading like uh you know uh, uh um, respect for acting well we did that too mm-hmm. but we were, we were reading like you know when we were reading about the stanislavski method my theater <laughs> teacher was kind of serious about well you know at least teaching us about the method we didn't necessarily we weren't like by the 17 way year old method actors talk about branding the method yeah 
is a method. It's There's a, lots of methods. Not the method. I no, know. but they yeah. were. It's a brilliant yeah. self. Uh, right. Uh, a, a brilliant way to brand <laughs> yourself. Yeah. Uh, what's your? What's your, no? We have. We're, this is the method. Uh, <laughs> right. Here's right. the finger. <laughs> <laughs> well, you already sort of described that you were more about the script and the and, and the text well, uh, and the text. Even even in the being in a that Jew, world. that makes sense. But uh, but uh, everybody <laughs> is. You you have to be about the text sure. if you're going to be an actor. It's just it's just the particular approach. I mean, I knew some. I would lose something by not studying acting. Uh-huh. And apprentice myself to the profession, and I would gain something by not studying acting. You, yeah. you know, you, you gain and lose on every choice you make. So mm-hmm. that was mine. Right. And um, and uh, but when you're working with another actor, your your thoughts about method or strategy it, it's literally you're literally working off of another actor. Yeah. If they're busy doing their 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 teacher's philosophy, right. then they're not in the scene. Yeah, they're not there. They're you not know. present. No, and no. they're, and, right. <clears throat> and, I, and I know that that was a point of contention probably with a lot of people that worked with such serious method actors and, and you know, directors have talked about it being, uh, it being very challenging to work w- w- with the Montgomery Cliffs of the world and the Marlon Brandos of the world. I, I'm sure it is, but I'm not so sure it's for the reasons that are thought of that, you know, you... Not every actor is. Mm, not every actor is difficult because they study with a particular discipline. Um, it's a, it's a it's a very interesting phenomena to be make yourself or allow yourself to become part of a group, and it's and, another theater group. Sorry, go ahead. And and uh, and the and. Mm-hmm. You know the director is responsible, especially in movies and theater. Uh, amazingly, on, on, in television, the directors have no power. Mm-hmm. It's all the writer producers mm-hmm. who have the the That's power. Right. Yeah. So, <clears throat> how do you put the team together to get the best result? And um, no, I wouldn't say actors are difficult because of where they studied. It's probably more related to their personality, I guess. Well, their personality could be the reason why they're kind of choosing to, you know, spend a lot of time internalizing, you know, and maybe to the degree where you're... You know, it, I, I, it would have to all. be specific. I, I don't know why we're getting so... I'm yeah. getting so caught up, and I don't mean to. I just know yeah. that you mentioned that. And Eli Wallach comes from that, right? You, you, oh, yeah. You, you, but at this, at, when he was in his 80s, <clears throat> and I do have an Eli Wallach story, too, because about the time he called me, I know you... Cold called him to to ple- be on the cast. No, right? he did. I asked him to to read. Oh, to read. It? I did a reading. <laughs> okay, uh, he plays your dad in the film. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mm. I got about seventeen actors together. We did a reading at a theater. I can't remember where it was, and maybe an audience of fifty people. Uh-huh. And um, actually, Eli, um, who else was there? Harris, uh, Dominic Chinesi. Mm-hmm. The Altacockers. The, the Cockers, yeah. <laughs> Beverly D'Angelo, I believe. Oh, right. She's in or maybe she's... it was Rita. No, it was Beverly D'Angelo. Uh-huh. And there was one other person. I can't remember. Anyway, the five of them came up to me after the reading and said, look, if this ever becomes something, they really would be interested. Wow. So once I heard that, that gave me even more confidence that this is material that would work. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But it's that kind of a thing. It's that. That's how comp. It's puzzle solving essentially. Yeah. It's a really interesting puzzle to solve. Well, I come up with great ideas. Execution is another is a problem for me. But like you, well, you did it. But uh, so well. At one point, I had, I'll make this really brief because you're only here for a brief amount of time. But I, I had this idea of and uh, takes place in the uh, 50s when an actor can't get any he's a was a leading man at one point but he he's so difficult he can't get any other work except for a western they're shooting in Spain and he, at a duress he has to take it and he goes and it, you know he's an asshole he's a jerk and he's alienated everybody and, and he goes to the it, to shoot the Sp- uh, script in, in Spain and, you know he's humiliated that he has to stoop to this level of shooting a cheap western by some guy who doesn't even speak English 
and he gets there and nobody speaks English and he doesn't have any, you know, the amenities he's used to. And of course he fall, you know, he just falls in love with his experience. It's not unlike in a way, local hero story in that way, you know, now that I think about it, maybe I stole this, <laughs> yeah. well, but the point is it's called spaghetti. And I wrote this treatment and I sent it. And at that time, it coincidentally, Eli Wallach, who was the ugly, as you know, right. had just written his memoir. Remember, this the was right the around, and me. Yeah, which probably was right around the time you made yeah. your film. Now that yeah. I think about it, and uh, I sent him my uh, this in the mail to his publisher because uh-huh. I didn't have it again. Like you said, Facebook, right. and well, he's not going to be on Facebook, but it wasn't so easy to find everybody right. like it is now. And so uh, I sent it to the publisher, and a couple weeks later, I'm upstate in uh, the Finger Lakes, and I get a phone call. And it's, hello, Adam. And it's Eli Wallach calling me. Hey, he smelled the job. <laughs> Seriously. Well, you know, and he just wants to say, I think it's a great idea. Do you want, and I said, and he said, do you want some of my time? I can call you at work. Uh, he called me and he spent like a few days later, an hour on the phone with me talking about life on the set of the Spaghetti Western. So I could kind of write, uh, you know, can you imagine Le- that? Uh, I can, because Eli... Loves what he does, and he loves the people who do what he does yeah. and loves, and makes perfect sense to me. When I gave him the, when I called him and said, I've got the money, mm-hmm. he said, who am I, the old Jew? I said, <laughs> right. well, the young Jew has been cast. <laughs> yeah. He said, you know, I'm an actor. I can stretch. I said, I'm, well, you're not going to stretch for this part because I'm going to play it. But he's, yes, that makes perfect sense to me. That he would do that for you. That was amazing. <clears throat> what was a little disconcerting is like the next day he called again, not remembering that he called the day before, but he was 88 or something. Yeah. Can't, can't. And he's he was, older than that, I'm sure. He might have been. Yeah, he, he was, was only, 88 when he did my film. Okay. So it was only, yeah, and he died at like He died 10, 10 years 90. later. Yeah, yeah. So you're right. He was probably 90 ish or so. Yeah. Oh, easily. He told me I, when we were working. Yeah, 10 years. He said, I think I got 10 more years. Yeah. Wow. I said, really? Yeah. How do you know that? He said, I don't know. I think that's what I think. And he got he had another ten years. If you say it, <laughs> if you say it, that you, we, it will be. It will be. If only. Just to get back to local hero again, then, if you don't mind, I don't know. I always, I always say this. I apologize ahead of time for dwelling on past things because, of course, I don't you, know how much people like to. to, to I, I do relevant work now. You know, that's that's what I would think. No, no, no. I'm here to. You know, okay. I don't. Doesn't bother me. All right. If I, like, if I could talk about my recent 10 films in the last few years, <laughs> believe me, I'd be talking about that. And I would. But no, you were doing t- a lot of TV, though. Uh, you're doing... You know, I the if the impression people have is that I work a lot, then that's a good impression. <laughs> you but do. My, I'm but my father tell used to that. work a lot. He worked 50 weeks a year. Yeah. A busy actor, maybe 26 weeks a year. That's not a lot. But um, it's it's always challenging to find work. And um, it's 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 rare to find security as an actor. Yeah. Maybe if you're in a successful soap opera, or if you're in a television series, that's that's about as secure as you can get, or a very long <laughs> run on in the theater. But those are exhausting. Eight right. shows a week is oh my and god. And don't it's compare uh, don't compare less than one percent of actors who make so much money off of being a superstar. That oh they, yeah, that's very they, rare. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the uh, not just an exception. Yeah. That's uh, actually it's a it's an interesting th- f- phenomena. If you if you have two or three surprisingly successful. Uh, monetary experiences, whether three it's a, series, a series, or a, or a, um, a big salary for a film, for whatever reason, Wh- whatever those two or three things are, if you if you're smart, you'll figure out a way to where to put your money because it's not going to be that. It's very rare that did you that know that, that happens. Did you know that? Back in the 80s and early 90s? Well, I didn't make any money to even consider that. But well, I made enough so that by mm-hmm. by 1990, there was enough money there that my lawyer said, you've got to do something with this. And I don't mean a million dollars, maybe maybe $100,000, which is a lot of money. Well, but he the, said, you have was... to figure out what to do here. Right. Uh-huh. You're not planning right. for your future. So, you know, I created a 401k and all those things that you have to do. Mm-hmm. And I bought an apartment in the city. And, you know, you, you, learn, how to, you learn how to do it. Yeah. It's, just, it's just most people think if I recognize you, you you're rich. 
Mm-hmm. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Right. Yeah. And... I mean, I learned about real estate through an active friend of mine uh, uh, named Bob Fields. And he he actually owned maybe nine apartments in New York City. And when he would have a rough period, that's, he would sell an apartment. Right. So that's he taught me about real estate. Yeah. And well, that was interesting. Incredible. Yeah. 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 But there are people who know how to do it. I sure. It's an absolutely fascinating skill set. I'm okay, but... Boy, it's fascinating. Yeah. Tim Matheson, when I met Tim, he'd been, you know, when we did Animal House, mm-hmm. he'd been working since he was a kid actor. And somebody taught him how to, where to put his money. And he had some beautiful home in, in, uh, in, in L.A. I mean, it was almost like a compound. Mm-hmm. So he was very smart that way, very right. knowledgeable. Yeah. Bruce McGill from Animal House also, he was very smart about money. He taught himself the market, how to play the market, which was really interesting. The one who he was the, uh, the one with the motorcycles. Yeah, right? D Day. You know, yeah, D Day, rather. Yeah, yeah. The, the one with the motorcycles. <laughs> I know you were Boone. That's oh, that's a good thing. <laughs> Occasionally, I have to be the devil's advocate too. Sure. I'm going to have to ask. Uh, working, you, we talked about Eli Wallach, and uh, <laughs> did, and then uh, Burt Another Lancaster. Actor. Yeah, Burt Lancaster. Yeah, you had uh, obviously a number of scenes with him. I mean, oh, he's yeah, only sure. in. But did he work for? Like on that film, a couple of days. He worked too? no. He worked three weeks. Oh, he did a week Back in then. Houston and that? two weeks in Scotland. Well, it's never how many days you work. It's not. It's not the size of the part. It's the impact of the part. I mean, well, I so, would. I yeah. would. You know. I mean, nowadays actors are paid so much money. I would suspect they want the actor in every scene. Mm-hmm. But if you look at movies from the '30s and '40s, an actor doesn't have to be in every scene. There's this thing, though, it's sort of a a hat trick in a way, like you cast the movie and then you bring in one old star from the past. I don't know if it's a if it's a kind of a demographic choice to try to bring in an older crowd. Yeah, even today. today, But it it was obviously even in in the 80s. I I don't think they they think that way at all. I think I think they think old people are just, you know, shaking in their shoes. They, They don't. No, it's only if the writer writes the part. They mm-hmm. don't hire it. They don't. They don't. It's not a. Um, it seemed like when they would write that part in the sh- in that story. Which one? A- a- any, it, or let's say local hero, for instance. It, well, that a part character. For somebody it, it, that here's Lancaster. an opportunity to bring in a. Um, no, that it wasn't old... written that. It wasn't for that okay. reason. Mm-hmm. It was because the writer thought mm-hmm. he heard Burt Lancaster's voice okay. as Happer, as the as the guy who yeah. was the richest man on the planet. No, he wouldn't. It, it wasn't done for that reason. And also, it really wasn't a Burt Lancaster movie. No. You know, in it was terms a Peter of... Peter Riegert film, actually. No, no, no. But I, but I mean, if, if, if whoever loves Burt Lancaster isn't necessarily going to find that movie, although he did an awful lot of interesting movies he, the last 10 years that he, he did was Atlantic working. City, et cetera. Oh, yeah, yeah God, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, and, you know, and I could never... Well, who was the character... Who had it was gunning for him the whole time? This guy that was working at, or at the office, and he—he's the one that was putting the sign out on on the skyscraper window and oh, ta- oh his ta- therapist. Ta- taunting his therapist. That was his therapist. Yes, oh, he it, hired it somebody was, to torment him. Yes, I see. He I it, couldn't it, figure it that was out. some. I can't remember the exact term, but it was like a um, gestalt a, his, hysteria or hostility trainer or something like that. I, see. I don't know. Yes, Happer is a mother. <laughs> but he how was he uh i mean he's great i mean i love working with him i yeah. he's one of the earliest names i remember from sure. being a kid mm-hmm. when we first got a television i think in 1951 two, three in there he, i my memory was it was a variety show and there was an i think it was sammy davis jr uh, doing impressions oh, yeah. of Burt Lancaster and Kirk Douglas arguing with each other. <laughs> That's my great, parents eh? were hysterical, and yeah. I went, "Why is that? Why is that funny?" And they said, "Well, these are two famous movie stars." And, and he told me Burt like. Lancaster. He was yeah. great mimic. As, uh, I didn't realize that until recently just how. I mean, we knew what a Sammy great Davis? Sa- singer, what an outstanding sang- singer and dancer yeah. Sammy Davis oh. was. But he was also doing impressions, and it was very controversial. Uh, because he would do, he was a black guy doing white people at the time. That was very, very controversial. It, it, it. That, his that father re- remind and his uncle. Me of that? I don't remember his that. His father and his uncle. He well, had they, an had, act they had with an him, act. Yeah. 
t- well, the first time when he would start doing it, he was still a relatively young guy, and he was still very close to his his family yeah. act. And they 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 said, "You do that again, we're going to beat the crap out of you because you're putting that. yourself in danger." There's a documentary Sam Pollard, this documentary filmmaker, made uh, called uh, "I Am." I am who I, I am. What I am. What's the name of the song? I don't know. Um, and it's called, it's Sam Davis. Right. Fantastic, fantastic documentary. Anyway, I'm just letting you know about it. Well, uh, how are you doing on time? I'm just give me a hard out. Okay. I just my watch clicked. Okay. Wow. Oh, it did Mark Knopfler ever come? That's a stupid question, but I just I know he, he did was, all the music. He to was, it. He, I put Mark was on the. He might have been on the set the briefly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When that when we did the Kaylee scene, the the dance, mm-hmm. oh. yeah, I, I'm pretty sure he was there for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I could be wrong. What a I great soundtrack! Because so. that oh was, my god, fantastic! Well, that was like a. I remember when that came out at that same time. Also, it was like everybody was listening to had a, the soundtrack on a. You know, they would record off the vinyl, like myself, onto a cassette and bring yeah, it to camp yeah. and just listen to the. It's so like I just yeah, put it on my phone again. Beautiful soundtrack. So people should check it out. Yeah, we'll maybe play it a little bit of it later on the on the podcast. Sure. <laughs> I'm just bringing stuff up also to see if if you have any particular, you know, reaction to it. I had an idea. Maybe I won't keep this on the um, podcast, but I really think this is a great idea. And now in the day where you have to come up with this, as you mentioned before, right. uh, how uh, lazy and un, um, at risk-taking distributors are and such. Right, right. I think they'll go for this idea. What do you think of a sequel to Local Hero? Here's my thought, Okay. I thought it all through. McIntyre is ne- nearing retirement. He's kind of getting up there. And he's heard that his friend has uh, passed away, uh, that he hasn't seen in like close to 40 years, right? He, uh, uh-huh. What was the character's name? Uh, pl- played by... Uh, uh, Dennis Lawson played the, uh, uh, er- Urquhart. Urquhart, of yeah. course. <laughs> <laughs> How could I forget that? Yeah. Urquhart. Or he's just... Gravely ill. I right. haven't figured that out yet. Yeah. Uh, maybe he should still because uh, what's his name is still alive. The uh, Capaldi, Peter. Yeah, Peter, Peter Capaldi, Capaldi is alive. He just finished and playing. He's Doctor huge. Who. Doctor Who. He's a yeah. huge star. You can get yeah. Capaldi in it too, or maybe it should be the the owner of the. But you weren't so close to him. The owner of the 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 inn that you stayed at. That the, was the Dennis couple. Lawson. Oh, that was Dennis Lawson, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe I you guys to, bonded. I, I you did tried. bond with him over the scotch. Oh God, yeah, sure. So maybe that's the character that or. I'm trying to figure out well, who, because you got also... A, I, I, you'll have to write Bill Forsyth and see if he wants to do something like that. Yeah, Bill Forsyth is still around, too. Yeah. It's a great idea. No, but you, you're, you're no longer in Houston, see, now you've, you've, you've moved up, and you're working just in finance. It's a, a business where nothing is bought and sold, right? We know that that's something that's like, it's empty. You know, you know it's, it's, it is a, a wonderful idea mm-hmm. because going back to one's past is very tempting to do. I know. But it's, it, it would be very interesting to see, um, in any story, to go back, especially that one. Out of all your work, I'd say that has the most, just has, has the, uh, the sort of the capacity for uh, telling another chapter to that story. You it's know? certainly and there, and there, possible. And it, and it's I not loved, far-fetched. No, uh, I think we should we should uh, I, I'll write the we should write this out. I think this is a great. Um, I'm working project. on my own stuff. <laughs> All right, so if I write it, I'll, I'll take an, I'll take a. But uh, before you do it, you gotta you know if you don't get permission from Warner I know, Brothers, it's a waste, and big Bill. waste of time, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, you'll have to put me in touch. I'll I'll write up something and I'll send it to him. I'll say you know we have uh, Peter's interest. Yeah. Please, <laughs> Peter Capaldi. I'm sure we can get him. Yeah. Um, no, but you can just on a con- just on the idea, the, the hypothetical. I'm just talking about. It's a. I just. I just thought. You know, I bet people really love. And you get that nostalgic. All those guys like my age that were my age in 1983 when this film came out, and who went to see it over and over, and it was become a major. Uh, uh, it's a very, underground kind of you know yeah. like a, a cult film for a lot of people. Yeah, in, but it's very rare that a film. You know, for lack of a better word, a sequel. It, it wouldn't exactly be a sequel, but it's obviously, it's never an easy thing to do, especially for something right. that's so uh, loved by the audience. Sure. You know? Well, you don't want to squ- you don't want to screw it up. That's, that's my for, point. For one thing. For one sure. of the benefits of Animal House, 
uh, and this is absurd. Not it's not a benefit. Well, I, they screwed wish, that I up. wish Belushi was still alive. <laughs> I know. But once he was gone, there was no way they could do it. They they tried. Oh, they did. Oh, sure. I know. Well, Anything they that did, makes that much money. Every they, network they did a, a, a TV series based on it. They did, but it wasn't. It, you know, they didn't have John. They didn't have me. They didn't have Tim. Right. And and um, it's 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 not easy to repeat. It's only in the modern era that that people have been that successful. It's true. You know how yeah. many? What are there? Nine Star Wars? It's unbelievable. But anything that makes that much money, they have to make sequels. Mm. It's, it's crazy not to. Right. Yeah. If if, if this would be obviously a, almost like a um, if if Animal House were made today, and it did the money that it did within three months, they'd have the next. Oh, they, uh, yeah. They'd, they'd already be on to the next. The next one. There were six porkies, for God's sakes. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> that's very people true. People and and Animal on, House begat porkies, and it begat all those. Well, uh, it, the uh, yeah, what I mean, would they, they call the that kind of comedy? The um, uh, successful. That well said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. We might have to do a part two at some point. I'm, I think. I think. We, I don't want. But to that leave. was great. Yeah. Can we do this over the phone as well? Sure. Because yeah. if you want to do more, I'll be happy to. Talk yeah. To you this more is on great for this is terrific part when you we we talked. I mean, you know, there's a lot of great stuff that. Because if you if you start this putting terrific. this together and you have other stuff you want me to do, let me know and I'll I'll do it over the phone. Yeah. No, I think this is a. Uh, what we have is great. Okay. I mean, I think this is a great stands on itself. I mean, uh, especially a lot of the your your share, your experiences you shared earlier on about when you directed uh, King of the Corner. Right. I think that's really invaluable stuff. And um, no, I you know it's a, it's it's I'm it's fun to talk about. I'm happy to do it. And I mean, we did get to the majority of the stuff. I didn't yeah. ask you about a few people, but that's so fine. I, I talked to you almost about everybody. But like I said, if you if okay. if there's anything specific you want to do, I'll set aside some time and we'll do, let's, you know great modern modern times. I want to take a picture of this thing. This is really cool. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And I want to get also. It would be great to get a picture while we're sitting here too. I can, I'll give you all the models of everything. It's so easy and portable. <laughs> 